Hello my friends! With this video I try to send a message to Moonton. I know Moonton is taking note of videos that blow up, so if you want to help me with blowing up this video, make sure to watch the whole thing and tell me at the end your opinion about the points that I have made. Maybe even make some additional suggestions about the topics that I haven't covered. Also, thank you to everyone who made a comment under my post. This is not a Mobile Legends hate video by the way. I still love this game and believe it's one if not the best mobile game out there. But I also believe that Moonton is wasting a lot of potential that could be easily fixed. So many more players can enjoy the game. Now we start small and simple with the first thing that I want to be changed. And these are the AFK rules. Right now you can surrender a game after 3 minutes if an ally is AFK. And you get 155 protection points if an ally went AFK in the middle of the match. That's far from being fair though. Why do you only get 155 protection points when someone in your team is AFK? Why won't you get a full protection star for it? It shouldn't be as difficult to implement a system like this that can't be exploited by win traders. This is something we will talk about later as well. If you would implement it smart, you can use it as a reward for those players with a credit score of 110. Instead of just giving them 5% more gold, these players will get a full protection point star whenever there is an AFK player in their team. Unless they are playing together with this AFK player in the group of course. I can imagine a high reward like this will motivate many players to be less toxic. If your credit score falls below 110, you have no protection from AFK players anymore. So you really try your best to be not toxic and lose 2 credit points about it. No, because of it. Moonton could easily fix 2 issues at once here in my opinion. Less toxicity, which they were pushing for already, and no more frustration about AFK players. And if your credit score is below 110, it's your own fault if you have no protection. The next issue that I and many of you have noticed is that many heroes are getting buffed when they are about to receive a new skin. The first example is of course my beloved 1-1. One -one. Beloved in like you, I like to play with her and her playstyle, not beloved in any weird way. She's supposed to be 15 after all and I'm 29 years old already. Okay. When they made the new Emerald skin for her, they completely overbuffed her. For anyone who isn't aware, before the buff, you had to hit 4 weaknesses to activate her ultimate. This was quite difficult at first, but after some time, you got the hang how to do it. Once you have activated it, you could get a triple kill or even more easily. This was really well balanced, because you had to wait for the right moment to jump into a gang. So you can activate it before the enemies burst you away. But now that they released the Emerald skin for her, they reduced it to 3 weaknesses. What means if you were a 1 more main before the change, you can activate your ult in less than a second. Just like me here. First they wanted to make her ultimate duration shorter. From 2.5 seconds down to 2 seconds. Which would have been fair. She would be still much stronger than before, but it wouldn't be as easy to get triple kills because of the shorter duration. This nerf on her ult was cancelled though. So they just removed one weakness to hit for her ult, which can wipe on an entire team when only one of them makes a the mistake to come too close to her. That's why she was boosted to the top of the bandless of course. Because like this, she's just too OP. Another thing some people notice is the recent adjustment on Nana. They took away her ability to zone out enemies with Molina and it's only possible that one Molina exists from now on. I didn't understand the changes at all until I saw some comments under my post. Nana is a great counter against Akai who is getting a special Kung Fu Panda skin. So the assumption that they nerfed Nana's counter ability in order to have a stronger Akai is not totally wrong. And this is something that should never happen. You potentially ruin a hero who was not always in the meta but had her unique skills and was always playable. There is the possibility that Nana goes into the abyss like many other heroes. And for all Nana mains or even time to time players like me, this is very sad. On the other hand, you have heroes like Valentina or before Paquito who are receiving nerf after nerf but this doesn't really affect them that much. This basically brings me to my third point. The balance is a total mess sometimes. If an old hero like Eudora or Xbox for example is becoming OP because the devs made some changes and didn't expect the result, it's okay. With over 100 heroes, this is something that can happen from time to time. But new heroes should never be totally OP from the get go. They can and should be strong of course because why would you add them otherwise? But being totally OP and basically not usable in rank because they are being banned 90% of the time? Come on Moonton, is this something you really want? I would like to have a meta where you have at least 15 to 20 heroes who are worth being banned. And according to your team, you ban the heroes who would counter you the most. 
Another thing that enhances my point is looking at the tier list from a few patches ago. Let's have a look at the two tier lists from Zayz, who is the EVOS legend code. Code? Coach. We have patch 1.6.84, which is the current version, and patch 1.6.50, which was the version 3 months ago. The first thing that I have noticed was that from the 37 entries in the S tier, which are the current meta heroes, 17 entries dropped out of the S tier, while 20 new entries were made. And all of this in just 3 months, so almost a complete meta changed. I would assume that the tier list in one year would look even more different. And my question would be, is this really a good thing that the meta is changing so quickly? This is maybe a personal preference for me, but I like to have a more consistent meta without constant big changes. Let me know what you think about it. One thing I won't criticize, although I'm reading a lot of negative comments about it, are the prices of the skins. To develop a game and keep it running you need a huge amount of income, because there are hundreds if not over <laughs> if not over 1000 people working on the game. These people must be paid. You also have huge server and marketing costs that also need to be covered. And as someone who has worked in the gaming industry for three and a half years and had to look into the numbers of my company, I know how much all of these things cost. If Moonton wouldn't make enough money to keep the game running, they would just shut it down. And this is something we as Mobile Legend players really don't want to happen, right? Something you can do though is getting more diamonds for free basically. How can you do this? You can re-download Mobile Legends right now with Aptoid. Why should you do this? Well, you will get a bonus of 15% right now when using my code MLG5 and on special days the bonus goes up to 30%. You don't have to create a new account or re-download any resources. Everything in the game stays the same. Well, except that you save a ton of money from now on. So do it now! You're not only supporting your own wallet, but also me and my channel. The download link and the step-by-step -step guide is in the description box below. Thank you for helping me out. The next thing that annoys me for quite some time already is the current ranking system. First, I want to quote a comment that stands for thousands of comments that I have received already. Why do I, with a perfect credit score and a win rate of 65% in solo, get paired with people who have a win rate of 40% and a credit score of 90, who probably will go AFK, be toxic or just feed the whole game? First of all, I hardly believe that anyone with a win rate of 76% in ranking alone is getting mixed together non-stop with players who have a win rate of only 40%. If your win rate is so high, you're going to rank up to higher mythic ranks, where the win rates aren't as low anymore. I observed many of my games and checked the overall win rates of the current season from each player. And I must say, they are actually pretty even. So the game is actually taking them much more into account than before. One and a half years ago, the win rates were all over the place. Then I was wondering, why does it still happen so often that there are two teams who seem to be very well balanced when you look at the win rates, but one is completely dominating the other one? Yes, sometimes a player have a bad day, but many times you have the feeling all of your enemies must have a win rate of 80% while all of your teammates have a win rate of 20% at best. I think the one big issue we have here is that there is no separate ranking system for solo queue games. If two players have one friend that is very good, they can be carried by this player into a rank where they don't belong and their win rate is higher than it would be when they play solo. And this causes the huge skill gaps that occur for seemingly no reason in my opinion. Now, what can we do to fix this issue? There are two options in my opinion. The first one would be to make a completely separated rank for solo queue and team games. So you have one separated rank for solo queue and one rank you have when you play with at least one friend. You could also make three different ranks including another one for 5-man teams. But since there aren't many players who actually play with a 5-man team, that might be too much and not as useful. But having a separate rank for solo queue players would be very fair in my opinion, because every player would only reach the rank that they can reach by themselves. There can't be anyone in Mythic anymore who got carried by a friend and then drags down the whole team when this player tries to play solo. This will be my preferred option. But I have another idea if the separate solo queue ranking is not what Moonton wants. You can track the win rates depending if a player plays solo queue or not. If someone plays solo and has a general win rate of 60% but the solo queue win rate is only 52%, this 52% win rate is the win rate that should count for the matchmaking. This stat should be easily trackable and the implementation shouldn't be really difficult. This merges with the fifth topic that I wanted to talk about basically, the matchmaking itself. There were some huge announcements in the beginning of 2022, but neither the AI system nor the blacklist was added until now. And the dodge system I only saw once, when my team picked 5 marksmen. 
So, one change I already suggested regarding the matchmaking. That would improve a lot already in my opinion. Another thing that would improve the matchmaking a lot would be, if you could pre-select the roles you want to play. Similar to your three main heroes you can select, you could select the roles you want to play. Maybe you like to play only SXP or gold laner. Maybe you like to play all roles, then you can select all. Or maybe you are really an only mage player. With a system that lets you select the role you want to play, there is a much lower chance that you get mixed together with someone that is an only mage player like you as well. The only mage player should be still mixed together with the I play all roles player of course. The system should be smart enough to let these players play together, but not the two players who only take the mid lane box. This would also change the assumption in higher ranks that every player must be able to play every role. You can fully focus on becoming the best mid laner or jungler in the world, because you're not getting mixed anymore with players who only play the same role as you do. This system would also lower the toxicity in the game, because there would be less fights about the roles. Another super important topic that I would like to get into is the lack of knowledge so many players have about the game. I mean, my channel is still focused a lot about teaching players how the game works. So of course this is a topic that really annoys me when I look into the game itself. When you never played a MOBA before and just played a tutorial, you have absolutely no idea about anything. Except how you move your hero, how to use skills, and that you're supposed to destroy the ugly baits of your enemy. But honestly, everyone knows this already before the tutorial. To prove my point, my 7 year old daughter really wanted to play with Nana one time, because she find Nana very cute, especially her mecha baby skin. So I let her play against the AI in the custom match and what should I say, she understood without explanation what she needed to do. She found out how to use skills, she found out that she have to destroy the turrets, that the turrets hurt her when she walks in without minions, and that she have to destroy the base. And Mobile Legend is a game that is supposed to be played by teenagers or adults. I would say 99.9% .9 know everything that is being teached in the tutorial. Apart from my guides, which I consider to be quite good, because otherwise I won't release them, there are many Mobile Legends content creators who teach players how to play the game. Why is Moonton not paying Elgin to make a patch notes video for every official server patch? And when the update was made, they show this video in the game itself. Many players really don't want to read the whole patch notes. But an entertaining video that removes this barrier would be very helpful for so many people. Another thing that really breaks my mind is how many players are just running around like headless chickens who never even had a word like rotation. And not only in epical glory, even in many mythic games I had teammates who started to farm the whole jungle as a side laner in the first 5 minutes. And they were not trolling, they were serious about it. I already introduced once the idea of the Mobile Legends Academy. With all the content creators that are out there, you can make a collection of videos that explain every detail of the game. In the gear section, there could be a video for each item that explains exactly how this item works. The same for the spells and for the emblems. Then there's a new section where you have a bunch of tutorials. They could contain role guides like I already did, a tutorial what rotation means and how it works and so on. After you're done watching the video, you will get a little quiz. And if you answered all questions right, you get a reward. Maybe even make an academic skin like Hanzo's as reward, if you have completed all quizzes. Yes, you could also search all stuff just on YouTube. But I'm sure many players don't even think about searching the stuff on YouTube. The academy also would really help to fix many issues we talked about already. Because if more people know how to play the game, the less issues there will be. The next topic I want to talk about are the exploits that sadly exist in the game. I'm not only talking about the plain cheaters who use map hacks. They are really annoying of course and rightfully getting banned a lot. Another topic that I see floating around a lot are the win traders though. This is not affecting the majority of players, but those who really want to reach the top of the ranks have an impossible job, because these win traders ruin every fair competition for the top spots. As far as I know, Moonton really haven't done much against it yet, but I also never spent the time to find out how win trading is even possible. Still, in a game that has a ranking system, all exploits must be targeted, because the top players of the game are usually the ones who spend the most money. As an example from my time in a gaming company, one of the top players in that game spent over $600,000. And everyone in the top 100 spent at least $10,000. The players at the top are the hardcore fans of the game. And they are very likely to spend money on the game. As company, you really don't want these people to be frustrated by dirty win traders. So Moonton, make sure to fix this issue please. As topic number 8, we have not really a problem. 
This is more a suggestion. While ranking is of course the place where you're supposed to play with your best heroes, Classic is the game mode where you test out new heroes, use heroes who you haven't used in a while, etc. Now if you have bad luck, you end up with a team where everyone is just testing out a new hero while the enemy's team have a... <coughs> Stop it. Get some help. While the enemy's team have a pro fanny who wants to get content for montages. These games are not fun at all. So what I would suggest is a new training mode. Not to replace the actual training mode of course. The classic training mode is a mode where you can only play heroes who you have 50 games or less with. Like this, there's almost no way to meet a pro fanny or Gushin who wants to have 30 kills. And the games are actually fair because everyone is basically training or testing a new hero. This is not the biggest issue of the game, but certainly a mode that would improve the training phase with a new hero a lot. The next topic I want to cover is the lore of Mobile Legends. While Moonton is investing the time to create new lores, it is still a confusing mess to connect all lores together. Many people are just too lazy to read them of course. But why are you not organizing the lore much better? The lore videos that I have made were very difficult to make sometimes. Because it's hard to put all information together. I would love to bring in some more information about the Land of Dawn, but getting all this information together is super hard. A well written and organized lore can make a hero or even the whole game itself much more interesting for the players though. After knowing the whole story of Argus and how he became a fallen angel, I am much more interested in him as a hero. Other MOBAs spend well more resources in making the laws accessible and many players really care about the stories of those games. In Mobile Legends though, I never saw anyone that could say I know the whole story of Mobile Legends. This is because it's really not accessible and the connections are not very well explained. There's no obvious timeline about what happened at which point. I will start to make a video like this with a couple of awesome members of my community very soon though. This will take some time, but if you're interested in something like this, make sure to subscribe. As last topic I want to talk about the heroes who seriously need a revamp because they're almost not usable in the current meta. Oh wait, I already made a video about this topic last week. Well, see you over there. <laughs>